Hi guys, I'm going to start reading today again, um, Runaway Ralph by Beverly Cleary. Some of us were absent and I just want to make sure everybody's caught up and we just started the book so I'm just going to start now. Chapter 1 is called Ralph Hears a Distant Bugle. The small brown mouse named Ralph, who was hiding under the grandfather clock, did not have much longer to wait before he could ride his motorcycle. The clock had struck eight already, and then 8.30. Ralph was the only mouse in the Mountain View Inn, a run-down hotel in the foothills of the Sierra Nevada, who owned a motorcycle. It was a mouse-sized motorcycle, a present from a boy named Keith, who had been a guest in room 215 over the 4th of July weekend. Ralph was proud of his motorcycle, but his brothers and sisters said he was selfish. I am not, said Ralph. Keith gave the motorcycle to me. That evening, while Ralph waited under the clock and watched the television set across the lobby, a man and a woman, followed by a medium-sized boy, walked into the hotel. They had the rumpled look of people who had driven many, many miles that day. The boy was wearing jeans, cowboy boots, and a white t-shirt with the words Happy Acres Camp stenciled across the front. Ralph observed the boy with interest. He was the right kind of boy, a boy sure to like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Since the day Keith had left the hotel, Ralph had longed for crumbs of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. A grating, grinding noise came from the works of the grandfather clock. Ralph clapped his paws over his ears. The clock grumbled and groaned and managed to strike the hour, nine o'clock. The time almost had come. The stroke of nine was followed by the slow, sad notes of music that lingered and died mysteriously in the distance every night at the same time. Did you hear that? The man asked the boy. It was the bugle at camp playing taps. So that's what music is, thought Ralph, who had puzzled over those notes all summer. When the boy did not answer, his mother said, Come on, Garf, cheer up. You're going to have a lot of fun at camp. Maybe, answered Garf, but I doubt it. And the father looked annoyed. You won't have any fun if you take that attitude, he said. And he went to the desk to inquire about a room with an extra cot for the night. Ralph could not understand the boy's behavior. He had often heard other young guests wearing the same kind of white t-shirt speak of the place called camp, but unlike this boy, they were always sounded eager and excited about going there. Ralph did not know exactly what a camp was, but since medium-sized boys and girls went there, he thought it must be a place where people ate peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. The desk clerk summoned old Matt, the elderly bellboy, and hotel handyman to show the family to their room. As Matt picked up their suitcases and led the way to the elevator, he said to Garf, Well, young fellow, what are you going to have for breakfast tomorrow? Apple pie or chocolate cake? Matt, who was not always popular with parents, was always liked by children. The boy smiled faintly at Matt joke as he followed the old man into the elevator. What that boy needs is a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, thought Ralph. When Matt returned to the lobby, Ralph watched him go into the hotel porch where he stood for a few minutes among the empty rocking chairs for his nightly look at the stars before he retired for the night. The night clerk, a college student hired for the summer, came on duty and settled down on a couch to read a thick book. Ralph's time almost had come. Sure enough, the clerk read a few pages and then lay down on the couch with the book face down on his chest and his eyes closed. Ralph was free for the night. He darted under the television set where he had hidden his motorcycle and the crash helmet that Keith had made for him from half of a ping pong ball lined with thistle down. He already had polished the chrome of his motorcycle by licking his paws and rubbing them all over the dull spots. Now, he set his crash helmet on his head. He snapped the rubber band under his chin to hold it into place, and taking care to keep his tail out of the spokes, 
he mounted his motorcycle. Next, he inhaled deeply and exhaling with a p -p 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 sound, the only sound that will make a miniature motorcycle go. He sped out from under the television and sat across the carpet. P -p 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 Ralph rode across the lobby. And here's a picture. Dun, 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 dun. And into the hall, up and down the hall, zoomed Ralph, and the joy of speed making up for the long hours of riding in dusty corners waiting for night to come. Up and down the hall, Ralph rode until he was too tired to take another breath. Then he parked his motorcycle in a shadowy corner. He hung his crash helmet on the handlebars, and he flattened himself and slipped under the door into his favorite room in the inn. It was a stuffy room, never very light even in the daytime, and he locked and locked when the last person left it at night. It was furnished with small tables and a row of high stools. The room was Ralph's favorite room because he could always find peanuts on the floor, sometimes popcorn, and once in a while, a great stuffed olive. Tonight, he gobbled his fill of peanuts, wishing he had a little grape jelly to go with them, and managed, in spite of being somewhat fatter than he had when he had entered, he managed to squeeze out again. P -p 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 Daredevil Ralph rode perilously close to the dangling hand of the night clerk sleeping on the couch before he tore the length of the hall. Ralph was exhilarated by speed, danger, and his own daring. P -p 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 Back to the lobby. As Ralph paused to take another deep breath, his sharp ears caught the approaching squeaks of his little brothers and sisters and cousins who rarely ventured out into the lobby because they were afraid of the stuffed deer heads on the wall and the stuffed animal on the mantelpiece and of the fire stone made out of stone. Drat! Ralph said softly to himself, Ralph was in the process of taking a deep breath so he could make a fast getaway when his mother and Uncle Lester scurried from under a chair in front of him. Ralph's deep breath came out in a poof and his motorcycle stopped. Ralph, said Uncle Lester, it's time we had a talk. And Ralph did not answer. He did not want to talk. No, neither did he want to listen, but he knew he could not avoid his Uncle Lester's lecture. He had only hoped it would end before the little mice managed to get downstairs. You can't go on living like this, said Uncle Lester, running around the lobby watching television all day and tearing around on that motorcycle all night. Yes, agreed Ralph's mother, a most fearful mouse whose whiskers trembled constantly with fright. She was afraid of people, vacuum cleaners, owls, cats, traps, and poisoned grain. She quivered at the slightest sound. And Ralph, he just stared at the carpet. Look at you, said Uncle Lester. Lint all over your whiskers. Ralph brushed his whiskers with one paw. And you're getting fat from eating peanuts you pick up in that, that place, continued Uncle Lester. A bar is no place for a young mouse. You will fall in with evil companions, said his mother, and they will lead you into trouble. Nobody can lead me any place, said Ralph, because I can go faster on my bike. By now, the little brothers and sisters and cousins had gathered to listen, wide-eyed and interested with pleasure. One cousin, braver than the rest, said, He just thinks he's so big, calling a motorcycle a bike. Ralph, you are sure to break your neck if you keep riding on that thing, said his mother. You said I could ride it said Ralph suddenly. And you said I could if I wore my crash helmet and we kept both paws on the handle grips. I know, admitted Ralph's mother with a sigh. I can't imagine what I was thinking of. The grandfather clock began to grind and groan. All of Ralph's family was alert and when the clock began to strike, they disappeared under chairs and behind deep draperies all except Uncle Lester, and even he looked nervous. This is no life for a growing mouse, said Uncle Lester. It is time you moved back upstairs to the mouse nest and helped 
lay in supplies for the lean months between summer and the ski season. You know, nobody comes to this old hotel to spill crumbs as long as there is a vacant room in one of the new motels out on the highway. The clock finished striking midnight and Ralph's relatives crept out of their hiding places. He won't, said one of the bigger little cousins. He won't because he's selfish. You keep out of this, said Ralph. He is, he is, he's just plain selfish, squeaked the little brothers and sisters and cousins. And the night clerk stirred in his sleep and all the mice froze into silence until the sound of snores came from the couch. All hotel mice know that they are safe from people who are snoring. And then the argument continued. He keeps everything for himself complained a little brother. That's right, agreed another. He never gives us a ride on his motorcycle. Now, Ralph, said his mother, it wouldn't hurt you to give the little mice a ride on once in a while. And I thought you said motorcycle riding was dangerous, Ralph reminded his mother. Well, that's no way to talk to your mother, said Uncle Lester. You don't have to speed. You can push your young relatives up and down the hall. Push them, squeaked Ralph in horror. <sighs> Push little mice up and down the hall on his beautiful motorcycle with its plastic seat and a pair of shiny chromium mufflers. <sighs> what a shocking idea. A motorcycle was not a kitty car. Now, Ralph, sharing your motorcycle won't hurt you one little bit, said his mother. Don't look so sulky. Me first, me first shrilled the little mice, pushing and shoving. Ralph, get that look off of your face. Uncle Lester looked so stern that Ralph knew there was no way out. Even the girls, he asked. Of course, said his mother. Quiet, children, or you will wake up the night clerk. Ralph wished the little mice would wake up the night clerk so he would have an excuse for hiding his motorcycle. However, his young relatives, who were, in Ralph's opinion, a fearful bunch, they were silenced. And there was nothing for Ralph to do but boost the nearest little one up onto the seat of the motorcycle. Give me the crash helmet, demanded the passenger. What are you waiting for? Uncle Lester asked. Let him wear it. Ralph removed his treasured helmet and he placed it on the head of the small passenger and wheeled the odd little mouse down the hall and back. More, more, demanded the little passenger. And there's a picture. You had your turn, Ralph spoke shortly as he looked with distaste at his young relatives scrambling all over one another in their eagerness to be next. There were so many of them. Pushing them up and down the hall would take him all night. Come on, he said crossly to his nearest cousin, and he clapped the crash helmet on his head and boosted him onto the plastic seat. Let's get this over with. Faster, demanded the cousin. I want to go faster. You be quiet, said Ralph. You wanted a ride, and you're getting it. Ralph soon found that pushing the motorcycle along the bare floor at the edge of the hall was easier than pushing it through the carpet. Up and down the hall, he trudged with one little mouse after another, while he longed to be riding off into the kitchen where the linoleum made the best speedway in the hotel. Up and down the hall plodded Ralph with brothers and sisters and cousins. He grew more and more rebellious as the stars outside the hotel grew dim above the pine trees. The motorcycle was his. It was given to him by a boy to ride, not to use as a kitty car for a lot of wiggly, squirmy little mice. A motorcycle was not a toy. Why couldn't his mother and Uncle Lester understand? Because they were too old to understand. Too old and too timid. That was why. Ralph felt sorry for himself and he Ralph felt sorry for himself caught as he was between two generations of mice most of his own litter had died from eating poisoned grain put out by a particularly disagreeable cook 
There was the older generation of mice who worried about safety and being able to scourge enough crumbs to tide them over the lean months between the summer season and the ski season. Then there was this younger generation of silly little mice who were always busy wiggling, climbing all over one another, and gobbling up crumbs as fast as they were brought to the nest. Nobody understood Ralph, which was his whole trouble. Night was fading, and the chirp of a bird outside in the pines told Ralph that the hotel was about to come to life. The night clerk soon would awaken and close his book, and the cook would soon be rattling pans in the kitchen. A cousin, braver than most, came running down the hall where Ralph was wearily pushing the motorcycle. You aren't fair, he scolded. You've given him three rides and some of the others two, and me only one. Ralph stopped in his tracks. Do you mean to stand there and tell me that some of you have had more than one ride? Yes, was the answer. And I'm going to tell Uncle Lester on you, then you'll really catch it. Ralph was too angry to squeak. He snatched his helmet from the head of his passenger. He tipped him off onto the floor and he mounted his motorcycle We're taking a deep, while taking a deep breath. And Ralph shot down the hall into the hallway. All right, friends, that is where we are going to stop today. We are in the middle of chapter one and it's called Ralph Hears a Distant Bugle. Done, done, done. And we'll read some more later. Have a good day.